Hey guys, I just wanted to do a recap of the movies that I watched for November this year. I think this is my third year doing it, maybe? I've lost track. Um, so anyway, I'm trying this out on Periscope. We'll see how this goes. Um, I usually make a lot of mistakes when I'm doing my um, video reviews for YouTube. Um, those are edited, so there may be some mistakes. Um, anyway... Uh, I only watched nine films this year. Um, I think that's the least I've done. But I've been really busy with school and all that fun stuff. And the first film that I watched was Fear in the Night, which was made in 1947, and it was directed by Maxwell Shane um, and starring Paul Kelly, DeForest Kelly, and Anne Doran. And it's basically about a bank teller um, played by DeForest Kelly, who has this dream that he's murdered someone in this room full of mirrors, and when he wakes up, he realizes that there's evidence that this might have actually happened. So he um, tries to get some help from his brother-in-law, who's a policeman, and his brother-in-law definitely doesn't believe him. Um, he doesn't believe that it was all a dream. He thinks that he actually killed someone, and it's pretty wild. Um... The second film I watched was Cause for Alarm, um, which was released in 1951 and directed by Tay Garnett. Um, and this one stars Loretta, Loretta Young, blah, excuse me, my first mistake, Loretta Young, um, Barry Sullivan, or Barney Sullivan, I think it's Barry, can't read my own writing, um, and Bruce Cowling. Um, and in this one, uh, we have Loretta Young's bedridden husband, um, who is convinced that she's having an affair with a friend of theirs and that she's trying to murder him. So he writes this letter and he sends it to the DA um, explaining what he thinks is happening. And most of the film is, um, well, about half of the film is Loretta Young trying to get this letter back. Um, film number three was Kiss of Death, um, released in 1947, directed by Henry Hathaway. And this one stars Victor Mature, Brian Donlevy, Colleen Gray, and Richard Widmark. Um, and the synopsis, um, ex-con Mature tries to go straight by working with the DA, who's played by um, Donlevy. Um, Richard Widmark really stood out in this. Um, in particular, he, his character is completely unhinged. And he really reminded me of the character Mickey Doyle, played by Paul Sparks in Boardwalk Empire. Um, they both have this really maniacal, creepy laugh that pops up a lot. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty good movie. Uh, film number four was Among the Living. Um, came out in 1941, and it was directed by Stuart Heisler. And it stars Albert Decker, Susan Hayward, Harry Carey Sr., um, and Francis Farmer. Um, and it's about a twin who's been uh, living in a secret room for like 10 years until his father's death. Um, he finally escapes. And um, Harry Carey plays a psychiatrist that's, um, or maybe he's a doctor, I don't think he's ever specifically um, a psychiatrist, but they bring up a lot of. Uh, psychiatric um, terms and stuff. Um, anyway, he does a lot of questionable things. Um, and Susan Hayward stands out among the rest of the cast. Everyone's kind of ugh, but Susan's really great. Um, movie number five was Shock, which came out in 1946 and was directed by Alfred L. Worker. And it stars Vincent Price, Lynn Berry, and Annabelle Shaw. And in this one, a woman witnesses a murder a murder happen in the um, hotel room across from hers. She sees it through the window. And she goes into shock. And she ends up in a sanitarium where Vincent Price basically proceeds to gaslight her. Um, number six is The Dark Mirror which came out in 1946 and was directed by, I can't pronounce his last name, but I'm going to try, Robert Siodmak. I hope that was right. 
um, which stars Olivia de Havilland, Lou Ayers, and Thomas Mitchell. Thomas Mitchell is an absolute treasure. I love him. Um, in this one, a woman with an identical twin is suspected of murdering her boyfriend or her lover or something like that. And it's up to psychiatrist Lou Ayers to figure out which of the twins um, committed the murder. Film number seven was He Walked by Night, which came out in 1948. It was directed by Anthony Mann and Alfred L. Worker. Um, I don't think... I think Anthony Mann was uncredited. Uncredited. Um, but I'm not sure. Um, it's your basic police procedural. Um, they're hunting down a murderer, and they show you all the um, technology at the disposal of the LAPD and how it is that they track down killers. Um, and it's loosely based on the actions of Erwin Machine Gun Walker. And something that I liked about this in particular um, was the setting. It's set in LA. Um, so there were a lot of, there were a lot of uh, exterior shots of places that I'm a little familiar with. Um, I'm from further south, I'm from Orange County, so I don't, I'm not an LA native, but I've been there quite a few times, so yeah, there were a few places that were kind of familiar. Um, number eight, The Hitchhiker, which came out in 1953 and was directed by Ida Lupino, um, and it stars Edmund O'Brien, Frank Lovejoy, and William Talman, and this film is also based on a true story, um, and uh, it's about two guys going on a fishing trip to Mexico, and they pick up a hitchhiker who turns out to be a serial killer. Um, and this was selected in 1998 by um, the United States National Film Registry as um, a film that was, I guess, worthy of preservation. Um, I think this one was definitely my favorite of the bunch. Um, I'm a big fan of Ida Lupino and her work. And the ninth and final film of the bunch was I, the Jury, which came out in 1953 and was directed by Harry Essex. And it's about a detective named Mike Hammer who's looking for the person that murdered his friend. Um... I realized that there were quite a few movies that had twins in them. Um, the first being um, Among the Living, um, and then The Dark Mirror with Olivia de Havilland playing herself, or she played two twins, a pair of twins, whatever. See, this is why I edit these things, because I'm already blah. Um, and then film number three, um, I, the Jury, also had a pair of twins. Um, it's pretty weird. And also there was a lot of, um, a lot of psychiatrists, um, a lot of psychological things. Um, there's hypnosis that happens in Fear in the Night. Um, and then... Among the Living, like I mentioned earlier, um, Harry Carey possibly plays a psychiatrist, um, but they use psychological terms and things like that. Um, the Dark Mirror, we have Lou Ayers playing a psychiatrist, um, and in Shock, um, Vincent Price plays uh, a psychiatrist, and there's I mean, it's mostly set in a sanitarium, so they deal a lot with mental illness and stuff like that. Um, and then in I, the Jury, um, the femme fatale, or one of the femme fatales, is a female psychiatrist. And while I was looking up um, the screenwriter for Shock, I th thought his name might be an Asian name, and I thought that was interesting, so I tried to find out if... Um, the screenwriter was an Asian, Asian man. Blah. Um, and I never found out for sure, but I found um, something something from the Hollywood 
Quarterly Review, or Hollywood Quarterly, um, an excerpt from an article called Psychiatry in the Films, which was published in January 1947, and I'm going to read this. It was written by Lawrence S. Cubby. And it says, quote, There are several such cheap and easy formulas, and I offer them gratis to all scriptwriters. To have a popular success on your hands, all you need is to make the psychiatrist into a stumblebum, as in Harvey, or into a villain, as in Shock, or alternatively, to remove the sting by turning the psychiatrist into a beautiful blonde who throws her arms around you between, quote, treatments, as in Spellbound. The formula is as surefire as Horatio Alger. But I cannot help wondering whether the movies, and the stage two for that matter, want permanently to remain on so infantile a plane as this." End quote. So I, he really wasn't a fan of the way um, psychiatry was portrayed in films. And um, I feel like most of the psychiatrists in this um, fit those three categories he gave, except for in... The Dark Mirror, I don't think Lou Ayers, um, he wasn't villainous, and he wasn't really a stumble bum, and he's not a beautiful blonde. Um, I, the jury, did in fact have a beautiful blonde who <laughs> threw her arms around um, my camera between treatments, um, and we had villainous psychiatrists in shock and in Among the Living. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I guess that wraps it up. And I'm excited to do Noir Vember again next year. Bye guys.